this morning as we get going. Everybody get something to drink. There's drinks in the house of God. Amen. Some good drinks. Good drinks. Romans chapter 4. Again, as we continue to go forward, just again another exhortation. It is so important that you and I know the Word of God. How many know that the devil is a, a liar? Yeah. How many know the devil is a deceiver? Yeah. How many know the enemy comes looking like an angel of light? The Bible says. He disguises himself as an angel of light. In other words, he looks good on the surface. But in the core of the enemy, there is death. So Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and life abundantly. That's God's desire. But the only way that we experience life is you and I to know the word of God. Thy word is life. It's life to my spirit. It's life to my being. Amen. And it's that which satisfies me. And it's that which directs me. And it keeps me down a straight and narrow road. That one of these days I will go and I will be with my maker for all eternity. How many know the Bible says that life is but a vapor? You are here for just a short time and you are gone. Just like that. How many have got friends and family or just people, you know, that, that just, you didn't expect that they died, but they died. Suddenly, unexpectedly, they were gone from your midst and off into eternity. Just like that. And it's so important that we value our life, value it enough, we value our time on earth, and we take every opportunity, you and I, to know the Lord Jesus and help other people know the Lord Jesus Christ. Because it's appointed for man to die once, and after this comes the judgment. At judgment, you will go to either heaven or you will go to hell. There is no in between. Well, how do you know that, Brad? Because I've read the Bible. I've read the scriptures. The scriptures talk nothing of purgatory. They talk of no in-between ground. They talk of two places. Jesus came to reveal the truth, to reveal to you and I, there is heaven and there is hell. People that receive me and believe in me, they go to heaven. People that reject me and disbelieve in me, they go to hell. I desire that all men everywhere be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. God's desire is that people come and they be with Him. And because He desires that, He had a plan to save people. So He went to a cross and He died on a cross where you and I could be forgiven of our sins and go to heaven. That's God's choice. I want you to go to heaven. But because He's love, each and every day He gives you and I a free will to do what we want to do. Whatever you want to do, you go do it. I'm for you. But this is my warning. Those that reject me and those that will not follow after me, there's only one place for that person. If they fail to come to the cross and the forgiveness that I have provided, the only thing for them is a place away from me. And that's a place called hell. We don't have to go there. The only way we can avoid hell is to know the Lord Jesus Christ and know His Word like never before, saints. I'm being convicted. Brad, you need to spend time in the Word. Brad, you need to turn off the TV. Brad, you need to quit wasting your time doing things that aren't necessary. You need to value your days on earth. You need to value your relationship with God. You need to draw close to me and know my word. Because guess what the number one sign of the end of the age is? Deception. People would be deceived. They would have religion without a relationship. They would not know the power of the Holy Spirit. They would know, not know a spiritual life. But they would know a tradition. They would know a religion. And so one of these days when Jesus comes back, he'll say to some people, listen, 
I never knew you. I know you had the title. I know you had a religion. But I never, never knew you. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. But for those of you that knew me, that stayed close with me, enter in, enter into the paradise that I have prepared for you for all eternity. And there'll be great joy. So we're seeing in our day and age there is going to be a separation from the wheat and the tares. We're going to see a separation between the sheep and the goats. And we're seeing a separation of those that belong to Jesus and those that don't. Light and darkness. Amen. And so it's imperative as we go forward for you and I to love the Scriptures. Love the Word of God. Father, I pray that even right now over our hearts. I pray conviction over my own heart and over the hearts that belong to You. Lord, I pray for a hunger and a thirst for Your Word. Your Word is a lamp into our path. It's a light. And we just treasure Your Word right now. Give us a hunger, Lord, to spend time with You so that we would not be deceived but we would know your will, we would know your ways, and stick to it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Romans chapter 4 this morning. I would like, we covered the majority of Romans chapter 4, but I want to start with just the end. Three verses of Romans 4. Thus far in Romans, we Paul has shown us that the whole world is guilty before God. Amen? Can I get an amen? I'm going to believe the whole world. Every man, every woman, every child, every nation, everybody has fallen short of the glory of God. That no man can be saved by religious deeds such as keeping the law. Amen? That's what we've studied so far. You can't keep the law. You can't be a do-gooder and go to heaven. You can't be religious and go to heaven. He has explained that God's way of salvation has always been by grace through faith. Amen? Amen? The only way to heaven is by grace, and that is God's empowering this morning. It's God, Christ in you, living inside of you. That's what grace is. Amen? And it's through faith. Everybody say through faith. Amen. And he used Abraham as we've talked about. Can I come down on this a little bit? We went a little too high here. Anyway, he used Abraham as an example. And so we are to follow in the steps of Abraham, who is the father of us all. And the Bible says that Abraham, what? He was fully assured that what God has promised, how many knew Abraham knew God? He had a relationship with God. He knew his word. And Abraham became convinced in his heart, God, what you said, you are able to bring it to pass. And therefore, it was accounted to Abraham as righteousness. Abraham, you're righteous because you believe in me and you believe in my word. And because he believed in his word, Abraham went forth out of his country into the country of God. And he bore a fruit for God. All through faith. All by the grace of God. God leading him through his word. Amen? And so in verse 23 it says, Not for his sake only was it written that it was credited to him, but for whose sake? For our sake. Everybody say, for my sake. It was written for my sake to whom it will be credited as those who believe in him who raised Jesus Christ our Lord from the dead. Hallelujah. And then verse 25, this is my favorite Easter scripture right here. This is my favorite scripture for the death and the resurrection that we have in Jesus Christ. It says, he who was delivered over because of our transgressions and he was what? Raised because of our Justification. Everybody say justification. justification. We're going to talk about justification. How many know what justification is? You and I, what? It's a standing before God. We stand before God just as if we have never sinned. That's what justification. Now, how many have sinned? 
All of us can say, we've all said, Brad, how can I stand before God? Well, it's called justification. God has granted to you and I to be justified. We can stand before God just as if we had never sinned. Praise God. You know, if Jesus stayed in the tomb, you and I could not be justified. But because God, God took the sins of all the world and he placed them on Jesus and Jesus died on that cross. He died paying the penalty and the consequences of our sin. Did you know Jesus died in your place? You and I deserve death, but somebody went and died in your place on your behalf. He took your sins. He bore your sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. Amen. But he didn't stay in the grave because Jesus was perfect. He knew no sin. And because he knew no sin, he rose from the dead and he is at the right hand of the throne of God. And because he has been raised, now you and I, we are now justified. Does that make sense? That's why the cross is so imperative that you and I believe in the cross. We believe in what was accomplished there. Without the cross, we have no standing before God. We have no heaven. We have no eternal life. We have eternal death apart from that cross. Jesus paid the price for us. He's been raised for our justification. That's the end of chapter 4. So as we go into chapter 5, he starts with this wonderful word called what? Therefore. Therefore. What's it there for, right, Cheryl? It's there for something. Therefore. That means God has done something for you through Jesus Christ. Therefore, this is now how I want you to live. This is how I want you now to believe and to think. Okay? So therefore, we have peace with God. How many know what the peace of God does in your life? The fruit of the Spirit is love, it's joy, it's peace. There's nothing like just being at peace with God. For many years, I had no peace with God. I was plagued with my hurt, with my shame. I was plagued with doubt and unbelief. I did not know where I was going. I did not know peace. I didn't have the peace of God in my life. Why? Because I was religious. Why? Because I was trying to keep the law. Why? Because I was trying to be a, good do a, a, a doer of good. But I knew that I wasn't quite right. I knew I had some, done some pretty bad things. And so when you're operating in works, you can never have peace. Does that make sense? You'll never have peace with God when you're dependent upon your works and your doing. Because you're always striving. You're always striving to earn God's acceptance. I've got to do God for God to accept me. I've got to do this. I've got to do this. And that's works and that's the law. And the Bible says that works and the law will never give you peace. What will give you peace is what? Justification through faith. By faith we believe Jesus died for me on that cross. My sins have been removed from me and now I stand before God. And when you make that statement of faith, peace will infiltrate your heart like never before. How many need some peace? How many know Jesus is the Prince of Peace? And when you will invite the Prince of Peace who died on the cross for you into your life, you can actually live with some peace and some calm and be able to just sit and be quiet in a crazy, chaotic, weird world. The world is going to continue to just spin out of control. How many know things are going faster and faster? Some of us, right here, start right here, I can learn to slow down. How do I learn to slow down? I get the peace of God in my life just to know, hey, you know, Brad, Jesus has got things under control. He's got things under control. What are you so, you know, got to go, got to do, go, go, go. Just sit down and chill out. Have faith. That's what God, Jesus always declared when he came to the earth. He said, well, have faith in God. Believe in me. 
Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Why are you working so hard to pay that, pay off the house? Didn't you know that Jesus said, have belief in me? In my Father's house are many mansions and I'm going to go prepare. I've got a house in heaven. If I've got a house in heaven, why am I working so hard? Now, there's a good thing in work ethic. Believe me, there's a good thing. But so often we strive and we strive and we strive. And in striving, we lose the peace of God. And the peace of God only comes upon our hearts when we can just have faith. God is going to take care of me. He's going to take care of the bills. He's going to take care of my health. He's going to take care of me. Young people, you need to know that because this world, AJ, this world is going to get weird. It's going to get crazy. Shay, you are set apart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You are a leader for these young people. And a leader for these young people are going to bring them into the house of God and say there's safety. There is peace in the house of God. Amen. Amen. There's peace in the house of God. Don't worry. Don't fret. Don't get involved in those things. You get a relationship with Jesus Christ and He will care for you. You can't have the peace of God. And so I want to continue to just implore you and I as we go forward. The world is seeking for peace. In the end times, what's, what's the world crying out for more than we just want some peace? There's wars. There's rumors of wars. There's violence. There's crime. And so our whole world is crying out for peace and for peace and for peace. And the only peace that we can have before Jesus comes back is the peace of Christ in our hearts and our lives. And we can experience that. And we can be fruitful by going and tell the world, I've found peace. And that peace comes through faith in Jesus Christ. If you'll believe, you can have peace. The peace of God. It's a place where your heart is at rest. Amen? You're not fretting. You're not afraid. You're not worried. How many are worried about your future? Jesus said this. Don't worry about the future. You see the birds in the air? I take care of them. I care for them. I know the number of hair on your head. I know all about you. I know everything. Don't be worried. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. That's a call for every single one of us in these end times. Don't be worried and don't be afraid. But cultivate the peace of God in your life. That peace will come in your life only when you will just say, God, I have faith in you. I believe in you. Amen. Condemnation, you see, means that God declares us sinners, which is a declaration of war. How many know that the sinner, those that don't know God, are an enemy of God? Whereas justification this morning, it means God declares us righteous, which is a declaration of peace. I love that. I want to encourage us this morning to walk in the peace of God. And faith is the answer. So he says, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's read uh, verse 2. Through whom also we have obtained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand and we exalt in hope of the glory of God. I brought along a living Bible because I wanted to read the living Bible to you this morning. And just give you a different flavor of what this says. Verse 1 and 2, it says, So now, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith in His promises, we can have real peace with Him because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done. Verse 2, For because of our faith, He has brought us into this place of highest privilege where we now stand. Everybody say, highest privilege. Because of your faith, you have been brought into a right relationship with God, into heaven itself. 
And now you are his child, brought right into the very throne room of the king himself, Jesus Christ. You have been given an extreme privilege and a right now to be with God in heaven. Because of our faith, he has brought us into this place of highest privilege where we now stand. And we confidently and joyfully look forward to actually becoming all that God has in mind for us to become. So not only do we have peace with God when we're justified by faith, but faith now is declaring to you, now God has a purpose for my life. I never knew what my purpose was until I got saved. And then I got saved. And then all of a sudden, there was a spark. And there was a fire. And there was just, I, I, got, I got a purpose for my life. Yeah. I never knew for sure before I met Jesus. I never knew. And I was just plagued with this yeah. just, just doubt. And, and, and just, what am I here for? Why do I exist? I'm a pretty good baseball player, but is that what you want from me? Is that what I'm here to do? You know, I'm pretty good with numbers. Am I supposed to do, be an accountant? Am I supposed to be a teacher? A man? What am I supposed? And I didn't know. But then when Jesus Christ came into my life, now I had a reason for getting up. And now I knew my purpose in earth. And that's what the book of Romans is talking about now. Amen. Life starts with God. You can have peace, first of all, with God. But then, more importantly, now, through that peace, Randy, you and I know who we are. We know who our master is. And it gives us a purpose for our very lives. What we're here to do. What we're here to become. How many know you're here for a purpose and you're to become something? Huh? That's what he's saying here. Be encouraged here, guys. We've been brought near into the highest place of privilege. We can now be called the child of the king and we can enter into the presence of God. And now we can confidentially, confidently and joyfully look forward to actually becoming all that God has had in mind for us to become. How many look forward to just becoming more and more what God has for you? There's got to be a passion in our lives to become all that God has for us. You get saved and then you realize God has a purpose for my life, a real plan, a real destiny, and I can look forward to it each and every day. As an individual and also as a church family, I want to encourage you, get excited about the plans and the purposes that God has for this church. Amen? Amen. When Paul said... We exalt. He's saying even boast. He can even boast in Jesus Christ and all that Jesus has and all that he's done for his life. That's what Paul is saying. We exalt. He says there in verse 2. We exalt in hope of the glory of God. You and I will be filled with the glory of God one of these days as we go forward in our relationship with him. Verse 3, it says not only this, but we also exalt in what? In our tribulations, everybody say in our tribulations. tribulations. We exalt in our tribulations, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance and perseverance, proven character and proven character, hope. And hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given unto us. This morning... The Apostle Paul is saying to you and I here in the book of Romans, we can rejoice also and exalt, exalt in our trials. Isn't that something? That we can rejoice. Why? Because the trials are, are, are working on behalf of the believer. See, your trials, that every trial that you're going for now, because you've made right with God, you're his child. Everything that you're going for, going into is working for your good. When you have to face the bills, when you have to face the boss, when you have to face the world, every temptation that comes your way, every trial that comes your way is now, Paul saying, it is working on your behalf and it is forming you. It is, it is proving you this as a child of God, not a child of the devil, but every trial you're going through is proving you as a son and as a daughter and as the bride of Christ. That's what every challenge in life should do for you and I. It should force us to go to Jesus Christ and be found in Him. 
And so he says, you can now even exalt in your trials and everything that you go through. We need to do a better job of that. How many of you know you guys, we, we're a bunch of whiners. How many of you know you, you and I, come on now. We're a bunch of complainers. We can find fault so quick. My wife is so good about just, Brad, just quit complaining what you don't have. Look at what you do have. Stop your complaining. Stop your wah, wah, wah. And rejoice in everything that you have because you have been given a lot. You have been given so much. So stop the whining. Stop the complaining. Everything that we're going through, we can rejoice in it all. Because again, listen, as a believer, we're living for eternal life. We're living for eternity, not for here and now. How many know if you're living here and now, you can get bogged down with life real quick. And life itself will affect your mind. It will affect your will. It will affect your attitude. And your attitude will, will just stink. Huh? Yep. How many know it's all about attitude? All about attitude. I got a little sign over here that says it's all about attitude. Have a, if you'll have the right attitude in life, you'll succeed. Amen? You okay with this? I've just got two more pages here. The trials that you and I are going through, and Jesus said many are the trials that we're going to go through. They're working for us and not against us. These are what make us and they prove us. Through trials now, we are being proven the children of God. So we see here the sequence here is tribulation. Everybody know it starts with tribulation. It's got to start somewhere. We go through tribulation. But tribulation brings about what? Patience. Okay. How many know when you go through a trial, what happens? How many know what go feels like to go through a trial? I'm being yeah. tried as a saint. Yeah. What is this? What is this thing that I'm going through? Yeah. God seems distant. You were just with Jesus the other day, and God, this is so wonderful, beautiful. This is the greatest thing on the face of the planet. Yes, I'm a believer. And then the next day you wake up and it feels like God is nowhere to be found. And it feels like all of life is about ready to cave in on you. And you are tempted to walk now by sight and not by faith. And by walking by sight, you and I are liable to make some wrong choices and drift away. And what we have to do when you find yourself going through tribulation, when you're going through the trials of life, you have to put on this thing called patience. How many know it's good? Just okay, I'm in the fire, I'm in the trial, and it's good not to run, so I'm just going to take a deep breath. It's going to be okay. It is going to be okay. I understand that it first starts with a trial because God loves me. He allows trials to come my way. When trials come my way, I can panic, I can freak out, and I can jet out instead of being patient. Okay, I'm just going to put on some patience here. How many know when husband and wife can get together, sparks can fly? <laughs> you get crazy and weird, you can feel bad. This woman that I love, so she's the hottest thing on the face of the planet has now become your enemy. <laughs> You're not the same woman I, I, I married. Something's changed. Something's become different. What do you do at that moment? Do you bail? No. You take a deep breath and say, God wants to teach me something here. I'm going to stay patient. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be patient. And how many know when you work when you work patience, amen, in that patience, you're working about proven character now. How many know God is more concerned about your character than he is the provision of your flesh? That's been in the body of Christ for a long time. The saying God is more concerned about your character than he is pro you're providing for your flesh and for your name. He's concerned about your character. 
And because he's concerned about your character, amen, he allows trials to come your way. But when the trial comes your, your way, you've got to first of all just take a deep breath and I'm going to be patient. I'm going to endure. I'm going to persevere through this thing. And just doing that, you're demonstrating the character of God. I'm going to know that it's through faith and patience that you inherit the kingdom of God, that you inherit God's promises. There's faith, but there's also this thing called patience. If you're impatient, you probably, that's why I think a lot of people are wandering away from the faith. They think God's some instant microwave, the instant genie that said, God, you said I'll be a preacher, and week one went by and I'm not a preacher. Therefore, I, get, I believe God is not yeah. God. No, it's not true. Because God didn't show up when I thought he would in my timing. And God says, no, it's in my timing. And Abraham, it might take 25 years, but I guarantee it, if I spoke it into existence, it's going to come to pass. Your job is to be patient and to wait and to wait and to wait. But in that waiting time, you're developing proven character. This is where I think I was going to implement that. We're not to quit. Right, Sharon, right there. How, so often when, when these trials come our way that are supposed to work for our good, you and I get discouraged. We, we, the devil starts lying to us and we give in to his lies and we get discouraged. And when we get discouraged, we quit. We bail. And that's the point in your Christian life that God wants to do something significant. He wants to place his very character inside of his very life inside of you. How many know Jesus himself had to endure a lot when he went to that cross? Yes. And that's why the Bible says, look at Jesus who endured such hostility against himself so that you don't grow weary, so that you, I spoke it on again Friday night and we were there for the body of Christ. God was saying just a, a strong word. Listen, the Bible says in Hebrews 12, 3, consider him. Consider Jesus, who endured such hostility against himself so that you don't grow weary. Amen. How many know Jesus went through more than you will ever go through? He went through it all already for you and I. So when we find ourselves in a difficult spot, we're to look at Jesus and that cross and say, well, Jesus did it. Therefore, I can do this thing. And you can endure some things. I had to endure x-ray school. Actually, I quit once. I quit once and thought about it. And God just, because many, you know, even in baseball, baseball, you know, it, there was just discouragement. And there's this time that you have to play for four years in college before you can ever play in the profession, unless you're real, real good. You gotta wait. You gotta pay your dues. You gotta, it takes time to develop a professional baseball player. It takes time to, pro, to, to develop a, prof, a professional football. It takes time to develop a minister of Jesus Christ. You've got to go through some trials. You've got to go through, through some things in life. It takes time to develop a, a, a marriage. It takes time to develop a church. Amen? Yeah. And because of time, when things don't go our way, we have this tendency to quit and to lose hope. And at that time, it's no time to quit. It's time to place your eyes on Jesus Christ who endured it all for you and get renewed, revived, and just stay put and say, I'm going to endure this thing. And you'll be amazed when you endure. And I got through school. I went through x-ray school. I actually got the paper that says, no, I'm an x-ray tech. <laughs> it wasn't so much the degree as it was character that God was putting in my life. Yep. Son, I'm doing something. and You're used to quitting. You're yep. used to giving up. I want you to persevere and be patient and show up. I want you to. So I enrolled. I went back. I went full time back to x-ray school while I was delivering pizzas at night. Working all day, all night, trying to make a living. That's when Heather and I got married. You know, still going to school. Working full time. Delivering pizzas, Rob. Can you believe that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anything to pay the bills. Why? Because God was developing a character in my life. One of these days you'll be a preacher, but Brad, just be faithful. Have him do, deliver in pizzas for now, okay? Finish your degree. This is speaking to somebody right now. God wants you to just be faithful where you're at. He's got a place for you right here, but it's so important right here where you're at that you develop patience and endurance and perseverance. 
This will come, but right now you just got to be faithful right here. Right here. So in that place of de developing patience, you're developing also through that proven character. And then proven character, I got some hope now. Because I got the goods now. Well, I got the character. I've got the strength. That's what happens in our marriages. We've been through some things. Huh? Rob and Kim, you've been through some things. Yeah. Sorry to take on. So I'll, I'll move over here. Jason. <laughs> <laughs> you've been through some things. But when the trial tent, you put on patience, right? We're going to be patient with one another. And in that, it develops some, some character in your life. Amen. And now through that character, there breeds a, now there's a hope. My husband ain't going anywhere. My wife's not going anywhere. We've been through some things. We've proven some character. We've proven some love. And because we've got love, now i got some hope for the future. Amen? We're going somewhere together. Does that make sense? That's, what care, that's what's taking place in our lives. Amen? The trials are sent our way to develop a patience and that patience has proven some character. And because now we have some character, this church has been around 10 years now. Yeah. Now, how many know we could have quit? Yeah. We could have been done a long time ago when things got tough, when the trials came in. We could have, it's too hard. Yeah. It's too hard. No, it's that time when you just be patient, Brad. Just keep showing up. You just keep showing up. Just keep showing up. Be patient. Yeah. Amen. And as you're patient, listen, you got some character. And once some character, after 10 years, this church has got some character. And I'm looking at them. I'm looking at them. It's you. You've got the character. We've been through some things. But because we got character, now we've got a hope that dwells inside of our heart. We're going somewhere. How many believe we're going somewhere? Yeah. We're going to do something for the Lord Jesus Christ. We're not going to quit. We're not going to die. We're going to live and we're going to bear fruit from God. Why? Because we got some character. If you don't have any character, chances are you probably won't do a whole lot in this life. There's a lot of people that are out on the streets because they fail to allow the trials of life to develop patience and a proven character that when things get tough, it don't matter. I've still got Jesus Christ. Amen. And I will do whatever. I will walk the streets selling beans. I will sell I'll juju beans. I will sell candy. I will, I will sell bread. I will do anything. I will make crosses if I have. God's put a dream in my heart to make some crosses. Sell those crosses. I will provide for my. But somehow, some way, I'm going to come alive because there's a hope and a dream in my heart. I got some character and I will succeed. I will become what God wants me to be. Now we've got to be careful there because sometimes we can get in our own will and our own thinking we can do it on our own, right, James? So, yeah, I can do this now. And there's a self-confidence that we have to be caught. No, it's not you. But the confidence is what? The confidence is in faith in Jesus Christ. God, you said it, and I believe you will bring it to pass. The confidence is in Him. And when the confidence is in Him, I got peace. I got the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. That's what God wants you and I to go forward when the world's crying out peace and safety, peace and safety. God says, watch out because then sudden destruction is going to come in. Huh? Yeah. But you and I don't have to be affected. We can have peace because Jesus already said it's going to happen. Amen. So he said, just chill out. Yeah. Just chill out. It's going to be okay. I said these things are going to happen. When you see them happen, know that I'm telling, I was telling you the truth. Yes. And you can be at peace. And you and I can continue to be the voice of God in a crazy world. I'm almost done here. Let's read chapter verse 5. I love these scriptures here. And then he goes back, For while we were still helpless, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for the good man, someone would dare even to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So Paul, I think, is what he's doing here. He's saying, listen, he reconciled you while you were a sinner. Okay? That's good news, right? God did that, right? But now, listen, 
Now you're not just, you're not a sinner anymore. You're a saint. You're my child. And so he's going to spell it out as we, he says, much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. Listen to verse 10. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more, but he say much more, <laughs> having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only this, but we also exalt in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. And what I believe is there, guys, that, that we have to grab a hold of, it's not, not to lose hope. So God saved him. If God could save me when I was a rebel, how much more now that I'm a saint can he save me? If he for could forgive me all of this sin, he can forgive me of this sin as a believer. But see what happens when the trials of life come in as a Christian, as a believer, and we go through hard times, there's a tendency to say, well, God cannot forgive me. I'm supposed to be perfect. I'm supposed to be just have it all together. And we allow the enemy to come in. How many know 30 years, God, being a Christian, God expects me to grow up. He expects me to mature. Amen? Amen. But sometimes in that desire to be even more mature and to become a man and you start failing and you start doing some wrong, amen, there's a tendency for you and I to fall under guilt and shame and condemnation and lose the hope and throw it all away. Yeah. And it all comes back for you and I to a place of faith and believing. My faith is that, God, if you could wash away 19 years of my own sinful lifestyle of just plain out rebellion and ugliness and perversion and la 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 the truth it just goes on I'm not going to go down the list but it was ornery if he could forgive me there while I was a rebel how much more now Brad that you're a saint you've been reconciled to God and you want to honor God and you want to please God with all your house how much more now can God forgive us Michael that's what he's saying so if he can forgive us don't quit don't give up but exult in every opportunity. Exult in glory in every trial. Everything that comes your way is now looking and working for you on your behalf to grow you up. Does that make sense? Yes. It's all working for our good, saints. So these scriptures were, were given what? They were written for us to give us hope. Amen. Through the encouragement of the scriptures, you and I, even if we fail, we are exhorted. If we fail, what are we supposed to do? We come and we confess our sins, Vic, to the Lord. We say, Brad, Brad blew it. Jesus, I blew it. But I confess it. And now I repent from it. I turn away. And I'm going to get back on track. I'm to be encouraged. And so I am not to give up hope. I am not to quit. I'm to keep going. Keep going. Can I get an amen? amen? God wants you to keep going. Yes. We're going to keep going this morning. We're going to be patient. We're going to allow God to just work. How many know that this worship team now, huh? Molly, we've been, been together for a little while now. Amen. Sometimes we get a chance to practice, sometimes we don't. But because we've worked together now, we can set up on a Friday night and sometimes we can just go with it, can't we? Because we didn't quit on each other. Huh? We, we believe the best and we have, all, all we have to be patient with Pastor Brad. <laughs> but in patience, there's a character now on our worship team. Rob, there's a character in our worship team now. My son, JB, he had to be patient with Dad. <laughs> i got to be patient with everybody. But instead of quitting, and, eh, you know, I didn't get my way. I didn't get what I needed to do up front. I've had people like that. They want to just sing right off the bat. I want to sing. Well, just give it some time. Come and just check it out for a little while. You know, because they didn't get their way, they quit. They bailed. Instead of becoming a part of what God wants us to become a part as a church family and love each other, it takes some time. And it takes patience. 
But as we are patient with one another, it proves a, a character. And when that character comes on us, now we got some hope, Molly. Molly, we're going somewhere. We're going somewhere together. As a church family, we're going somewhere together. Yeah. And I want to thank you once again for being patient, for developing that character. And now we've got some hope that we're going to go forward and become fruitful, effective, and become the voice of God to this world. Amen. And do some things that's going to see some change in people's lives. That's what we're here to do as a church, is to see people born again going to heaven. Amen. Amen. What we're here to do as a church is we're here to see some saints encouraged. Amen. Michael, are you encouraged, brother? I've been so encouraged these last few months of just getting to know these wonderful people in my life. You know, there's encouragement. That's what we're here to do as a church. People are discouraged, but we get them into the house of God and we begin to love, be patient with one another, forgive each other, amen? And, and together, there's something that happens that we can stand on our feet and now go out into this world and, and make a stand. That right, Zach, the Hellfighters, you're out there, amen, and the Sin Slayers. Remember, Sin Slayers first, and then Hellfighters. <laughs> amen. Y'all get that this morning? Being 